Hey everybody, it's Allison again, STLProStretch.com. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And today's stretching is going to be about shoulders and neck tension. Uh, sometimes in class I will get requests to do shoulders and neck. And um, yeah, we have some stretches for it. Um, it's not going to be, you know, as intense probably as it, like a deep tissue massage, but certainly does help, and especially if you suffer from chronic um, trap and levator scap type, uh, tension. So let's start seated today. This first stretch is, <laughs> it's actually for pec minor, but I feel like it does a little of both and it also gets into the top of the shoulders, the supraspinatus. Um, I'm gonna interlace my fingers, push the palms of my fingers, of my, of my hands together, and take them above my head. I'm pushing the palms together, the fingers are pulling apart. Or you can try it the other way, without the palms together. Both ways, kind of do a little bit of something different. So try it both ways. So um, my elbows are up, my hands are above my head. I'm going to open my elbows, squeeze the shoulder blades together and down. And then I'm going to take my elbows, and while my shoulders are relaxed, pull them down away from my head. I'm going to bring my elbows towards each other. Now we don't want the hands to come down, so make sure the hands are staying above the head. And then open and close. Call this one the can opener. So when we bring the elbows together, we want the shoulders to be relaxed. You may feel a little stretching, the rhomboids, and across the top of the shoulder. I'll do that a few more times. And then we're going to stretch the trap. So, trap. To stretch the trap, arm has to go across the body. The head is going to tilt the opposite direction. So I've got to provide resistance because this is a Kihara resistance stretch and we always are resisting and putting force against the muscle we're stretching as it goes from short to long. So remember that. Also remember just work within your range of motion, especially if you've got a shoulder injury. Uh, we don't want to make it worse. So, so definitely work within your range of motion and do not work through pain. So stop doing anything if it hurts. So we're going to take, I'm going to start with my right arm. It's going up toward the ceiling. That's my motion. Your motion may be shorter than that. I don't know. Um, my, I have pretty good a range of motion here, so I'm going to bring my arm up to the ceiling. And as it goes up, I'm going to take the other arm and pull it down. So the arm, one arm is still going up. The other arm is bringing it down. I'm also, I'm already getting a huge trap stretch. And as I bring the arm across, I'm going to tilt my head over to the left. Bring the arm up, pulling it down. So this arm is always going up. I'm pulling it down. I'm also giving it a little traction by reaching my fingers away from my body. And then tilt the head over. So we'll do a couple more. You can do as many as you like. Eight to ten is a good amount. And I have been super tight in my shoulders lately, so I thought this would be a good time. <laughs> Well, I can get a video done and uh, get my stretching in at the same time. So we'll do two more. So we'll have six under our belt, and then we'll go to the other side. And we'll do the other side. So up and down. We call this one the Y closer because we're making a Y pattern, um, and we're closing it. So we're starting closed, and then we, we start open, and then we go closed. So my arm's going up, my other arm is going to take the, move it down and across the body. I think my microphone's going to get a little smushed in this one. And then I'm going to tilt my head over to the right. So up, and then through. This is like the fourth one. We'll do about, we'll do a couple more. Take as many more repetitions as you like. And then we're going to do a very similar stretch. Oh, also, when I'm talking about traction, what I mean is I'm actually reaching out with my arm to, to, to um, traction. I'm pull, pulling away from the body, and that will increase the stretch a little bit as well. So the next one is for um, the mid-delt, 
And but this line goes all the way up into the side of the neck. So if you have a lot of neck pain on the side, this is a good one. It can even get up into the ear. So I'm going to take my elbow up and my wrist, the same. I'm pushing down with the opposite arm. At the same time, I'm tractioning my elbow away from me. So I'm bringing the arm down, and then my head's going to go over again to the left. So up and then down. We'll do one more, and then switch sides. Not so many on this on this uh, exercise. If you've got access to a lat raise machine at the gym, this is a great machine to get this stretch in because you can lift your arms and then traction your elbows away. Don't do a lot of he don't do heavy weight, but as you lower, you can take your head over to the side. But some of us, especially this time in our lives, do not have access to a gym, so this is a great alternative. So elbow and wrist go up. I'm going to push down with the opposite arm. So my arm's still going up, and the other arm, my right arm is pushing it down. I'm tractioning my elbow away, and I'm going to tilt my head over to the right. So lift, and over to the right. Oh, wow. This side's a lot tighter. It's such a simple stretch, but it really does work, and it will help um, strip away some of the tension that you're carrying around. All right. And next, we're going to do um, just some, these aren't really resistance stretches. They're just fascial stretches. Um, they may really help you a lot. Um, one of them is for the trap. Um, basically, I'm going to take one arm behind my head. And I'm going to turn my head. So I'm taking my right arm behind my head. I'm going to turn my eyes, my head, my nose, toward the right. And I'm going to relax this right shoulder as much as I can. And then my left ear is going to go down toward my left knee. So that's one stretch. Now, if I take this stretch and turn it so that my nose goes down to the left. Then I'm going to get into that levator scap. I'm using my hand. I'm not really resisting back too much with my head because in Kihara we don't usually get into the spinal um, movements too much. But just try it out. This is also a great one to do if you've got the yoga stretch, the, the cow, cow face pose stretch. Try that. Try both directions, ear down, and then you can tilt your head, tilt your head away, and then nose down. So try that. You may get into that levator scap. The levator scap is the one that uh, goes up like that. And then we'll try the other side. So I'm just taking my arm behind my head. You don't have to do that. I am turning my ear toward my right knee my right ear, and I'm going to take my head down. That's a trap stretch. As I said, we don't have to use resistance. I'm just using my hand to guide and provide a little bit more weight. And then I'm going to turn my nose toward my knee and take it down. And that should be levator. And then you can always try the cow face pose stretch. Um, I add this in a lot when I'm teaching yoga classes to the cow face pose, the arms. Um, one arm goes behind, the other is up and over. I'm going to tilt my head over to the right and then rotate to my nose. starts coming down toward the knee. Now, I have had somebody ask, what do I do for the front of my neck? Well, normally the front of the neck muscles are pretty stretched out as it is, um, just because we a lot of us have this forward head position, which stretches the muscles. But scalenes can get tight. Uh, sternocleidomastoid can get tight. We're going to address the scalenes here. So what I like to do is just put my hand, my fingers, right above the right below the collarbone, give it a little bit of tension, and then I'm going to 
I'm going to move my head the opposite direction. So I'm going to move my head up and back to the left. Just kind of stretch my jaw up while I'm pushing down and really scaling. Some of them can actually connect to the first couple ribs. So that's why I'm pressing down, just to, to pin them. So this is a pin and stretch. And then I'm going to take it to the other side. My microphone's a little bit in the way, but I'm pressed down. And then move my head. I'm going to start short and then move it long. And then I'm going to add a little jaw movement. And then you can do both, pressing down with all the fingers below the collarbone. And then start with the head in the short position. Open your mouth. And then take your head back. And as you get to the top, close the mouth. And those would be some um, different, interesting neck stretches for you to try out. Again, if anything hurts, stop doing it and um, work within your range of motion. I hope you can get something out of that today and hopefully release a little tension in your shoulders. And I will see you next time. Happy stretching. Bye-bye.